What's up, Dusty? What is up? Another day, another dino. Yeah, so we got this one finished up. It was Robert Henderson. Yep. This car and uh, he wanted to get it ready to do some track tuning. So he had a, a pretty decent camshaft in here. Uh, I'm not exactly sure which one it was, but um, another shop's camshaft. And it made decent power, uh, but he wanted a, the red hot cam in here, so we, we did that and put some springs on it while we were in there, cleaned up a few things. Um, Chris tuned it, it actually came in the door at 386. And I did have a stock, I did have a base tune. I think I tuned it on the street a yeah, few, several years ago. Years ago. And um, almost exactly three years ago. So we had a nice little street tune on it. Um, and then, you know, of course, years go, go by, now it's here. Yep. And also this was unlocked. Well. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. So, yeah, not really apples to apples, but this this is. I mean, yep. this blue line was locked up with the old cam on ninety three, uh, made four thirty two. Yep. Four oh five torque. You can see the line here, um, and then the green line here is the red hot cam on ninety three. You can see the difference here. We'll highlight that, but you can see the difference in torque. It went from 396 to 408, so about 12 yep. foot pounds here. And horsepower wise, um, you know, depending on where you look under the curve, it, the peak number is not as impressive, but under the curve is 10 to 12 horsepower as well. And that's something else to discuss. The peak number is not as impressive because. Yeah. Numbers in this box don't tell the whole story. <laughs> he has an older single disc converter. So you can see the jumpiness of the uh, green line yeah. is because of the converter not being able to hold under wide open throttle that's why we only made a few pulls and the rest we tried to just tune it in unlocked and um, we actually did shot off the ends of these graphs because just they full do disclosure, yeah. it went i mean terrible same kind of thing as this and it's um, just always worse. about the same place it had already peaked both graph, all the graphs had already peaked, but yeah, we're peaking around 6,300. It would, it never would 100% lock up. Chris always saw 200, 300 RPMs of slip, even when it was fully locked, and that was commanded full pressure in the tune and manual. Like, whatever you can do, we tried all kinds of stuff. He did his thing. Yep. It just won't hold it, which is kind of typical of a single disc. They don't even make them anymore. That's why. <laughs> so and. And we did rule out any kind of valve train issues or other issues um, after we went ahead and uh, unlocked the converter. All the pulls were clean. Yeah, they pull up the seven, no problem. So we dialed it in like that, and then we just did an, a lockup to try to get the differences in numbers because, you know, hey, everybody likes to see differences. But I guess the short of it is, I mean, we picked up pretty good from where it came in, a quick tune on his old cam, new cam, and E85. So... There again, the peak numbers don't tell the difference because he did mention he wanted just more down low and mid range. He thought he was a little low, and he's right because that's where it picked up the most. Uh, also, when he was pulling apart the lifter, I'm sorry, not the lifters, the springs, you said were off yeah, a little bit in regards to. Uh, the retainers, retainers that were on here were rubbing the rocker arm. So the rocker arm was actually removing material from the outside edge of the retainer. Um, and that was also slowing the valve closure event. Yep. You know, it's just the geometry. They get frequencies, you know, valve train geometry is very critical at high RPM. Uh, that's one thing BTR kind of spends a lot of time on, or load design to try to get, you know, the spin trying to keep the valve yep. bounce, close and bounce to a minimum and this and that. But whenever you have something rubbing the side of the valve retainer, not a good deal. Also, the valve seat spring pockets have been machined at some point. So, yep. you know, sometimes it's not just a throw it together deal. Um, we had to go in. I noticed the machine marks in the spring pockets, and I used the height marks to check the valve spring installed height, and it was much, much taller than, you know, 1780 or 1800. It was like 1880. So had to put some spring shims underneath it to get the seat pressure back up where yeah. it needed to be. So and it was sort of go through it and, you know, fix on what he has, and then sort of see how it does for the future. Maybe a. Uh, add some compression or rebuild, the, you know, go through it. it. You know, it's a lot of things that we could do, but we just wanted to get this one up. This one, um, Robert also wants us to bring it to the track. So we do have some 20 in, 26 inch tall slicks. I think they're Hoosier slicks actually. 
Um, we're going to try to see if we can't get those to hook and run out of, see what we can get, probably do some eighth mile testing. So yeah, Dusty I, did get one pull. I do think that the number that we're seeing here is still not <laughs> Whoops, that was my bad, guys. All right, still go. not representative of actual yes. making. Yes. We still think that, we're making more, but we're not about, you know, we're not after a number. Everybody wants a number. We're up, we want to see what does the racetrack when the converter's not going to be locked up anyway. So we feel like apples to apples with the other cars that do lock solid, this car would show more. Yeah. Yeah, that was the other that was the other point. Even on this uh when we tried to lock it here, it was slipping uh several hundred RPM throughout the pull. And on a higher horsepower car, because you know mine we've got so much data on, it'll lose like 60 horsepower unlocked to lock. This one, probably about 40 was it was it was losing. So about being half locked here, I think we probably would have shown, you know, 455. Yeah. You know, maybe even which 460. Kind of make more sense. Which make, yeah, exactly. But, it is an LS3. Yeah. Uh, BXT, so. so. Yeah, we'll see. The track, you know. The track will tell the story. Dino's a tuning tool. We got it tuned in. We'll see what they'll do with the track. So. 100%. On to the track. Also, just wanted to note, it made 458 um, uncorrected today, so not bad.
It was recording. I think the GoPro got it, so how did it end up, Dusty? What that so you're on a street tire now. Yeah, I mean like y'all get get in on this right here. <laughs> uh we got some some daggum Avon area right, Avon Avon Sport. Yeah, some a Advan, Advan Sport. Sports. Yeah, yeah. And it Dead hook with a 3DP. I mean, yeah. it, it ran a 780. I gave him the hit. That's why, hopefully, the, like I said, I think I'm 99% sure the GoPro is recording. But I gave him the hit. And uh, then when I saw him go, I left. And we ran another 7.4. Seven, seven, I stalled it up, not as much. So we do like, I know that this needs to be about 1,800 stall on the brake. And then floor it, and it flashes about... 44,000 so that's where it needs to be got a new best mile an hour picked up to 93 so it's dialed in shifts are great that's a bracket car i swear it's a bracket car and it just works it run the same time all night it didn't matter if and that's the same thing on the dyno it just made the same power it just it's a consistent car i mean it's a good car so we're gonna get it loaded up but i did want to film a little bit more i had been real slack about that but we'll get the gopro footage on here soon oh that's a lot clearer without that glare anyways until next time i'll get the Dusty never sent me the dyno video. So we'll get that and we'll uh, make this one long video. Until next time, guys.